Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today, that word is baptism. Baptism. Now, uh, again, we're on the second question. What is the Holy Spirit's role pre-conversion, in conversion, and post-conversion? And uh, we're in talking about in conversion. What is his role uh, during the salvation process? And 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 we're talking about a lot of things that happen in a, in a moment, right? In that split second. And and so we already talked about the regeneration yesterday, but today the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now. Uh, baptism, that word, really means complete immersion. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but it's complete immersion. You know, that he covers us completely. And, and, and I will just say this, this is not going to be an exhaustive talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit because there's a lot of different views out there and uh, a lot of different things. And so we could spend a lot of time on this one part, but we're just, we simply just don't have the time to do that in this format. So, um, we're going to look at John chapter one uh, as John the Baptist uh, baptizes Jesus and, and see what he sees and what he says. And then we're going to look at some other passages uh, today to look at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is what happens in that moment of conversion that you place your faith and trust and say, yes, I, I want you to be Lord of my life. In that moment that you have saving faith, the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes. So. Uh, John chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 29, says the next day, John, this is John the Baptist, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Man, I love, love that verse. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him. This is he who baptizes with water the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. See, even as, as John had already gotten word, he says, look, the one that you see the Spirit uh, remaining on, descend on and remain on, this is the one who comes to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And, and just think about for a moment, you know, the, the whole ministry of Jesus on earth and, and the time that he was with his disciples and the time that he was continuing to tell them about the things of the spirit that were coming and, and they had no idea what was coming. And even as believers today, even though we have, you know, when we come to, to saving uh, knowledge and saving faith in Jesus, then, you know, we have an, we have an idea of what's going on. But in that moment of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it, it's when the Lord, when when you say, Lord, take over, and he does. See, um, Acts chapter 1, verse 5, right before Jesus ascends, as he's talking about the day of Pentecost that's coming, when the, there in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit descended uh, there at Pentecost. And, and Acts chapter 1, verse 5, Jesus said this, he says, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And, and then you have this great, you go to Acts chapter 2 and you see this great moment of, of the, the Spirit descending. And, and it's like tongues of fire and, and they begin speaking in different tongues. And, and that's one part I said, you know, there's, there's some people that believe that because they had uh, were speaking in tongues and that's an automatic uh, or that has to be a sign of the Spirit uh, baptizing any believer that they would automatically be speaking in tongues. And so that, that is one belief that is out there. But I'll just say you don't see that with every conversion in Scripture. So, um, But like I said, we don't have time to go there today. So the Pentecost was, that day of Pentecost was the beginning of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right. And, and these were already believers, but it was from that moment that that they began, that they were baptized. And then after that, as people believed, then they were immediately baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
And um, we also see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 13, Paul says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. You know, and, and I kind of go a little bit further on that. This is, furthermore, this is why we believe uh, as Baptists, this is why we believe in full immersion uh, in water, right? Uh, the, the baptism in water that comes after salvation comes after that full uh, immersion of the Holy Spirit. And, and so one of the reasons that we baptize with water is so that we're showing an outward symbol. We always say an outward symbol of an inward change. But it's also an outward symbol of the spiritual change that has taken place. It, it's a picture of the spiritual, uh, the Holy Spirit rather, um, baptizing us in His in himself, right? That, that we become uh, kind of one with God there. Uh, that the Spirit is within us and living in us and through us, but it's, it begins with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I ran across this chart, and I'm going to try to put it up for you so you'll be able to see it. And, um, But I just want to kind of point out a couple of things here, uh, just in case I don't get it up after I do this video. Uh, so we can kind of look at it this way. When did the baptism of the Holy Spirit occur? Now, this is, I told you, this is, uh, this is from Elmer Towns, uh, uh, Book of Theology, and um, it's theology for today. But it, it's just kind of the way it breaks it down. A little theology here for you. But just to think about this, when did the baptism of the Holy Spirit occur? The theological answer is in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So in that moment that, that Jesus Christ completed it, it was finished, he rose from the dead, right? In that moment, then we're able, theologically, we're able to be uh, baptized by the Holy Spirit. The historical answer, right, is that when did the baptism of the Holy Spirit occur? On the day of Pentecost, what we just talked about, uh, that the church was baptized, the, the infant church, right, the baby church, but really even before it was born. So like the embryo of the church uh, was baptized in the spirit. The experiential answer is at the moment of your conversion, or the moment of my conversion, right? I was baptized in the Holy Spirit at that moment. But then as a testimonial answer, as I submitted to water, te uh, water baptism, I testified of my spiritual baptism. And I just love the way that he broke that down. And, and I wanted to share that with you today because there are a lot of different ways that we can look at it, but they don't have to be separated because that's the way that God works. That at the moment that his plan was complete, that, that he conquered death, hell, and the grave, then the, uh, the ability and capability of us to be baptized by the Holy Spirit was made possible then. And then it actually happened there, you know, uh, began historically in Acts chapter two with uh, the day of Pentecost. But that at your conversion and my conversion in that moment, that's when we experience it. But then as we're baptized afterwards, after we're born again, when we're baptized in water, we're showing proof and showing the sign of what has happened to us. So you might be thinking, okay, well, man, that's a lot of great education uh, information for me today. And, and I told you, as we go through this, I want you to understand, have a deeper knowledge of God, to dive in a little deeper, even to sometimes the tough questions and the tough um, subjects. But here's the application for you today. Okay, don't check out on me yet. Here's the application for you today and a question or a challenge for you today. So if you, if you're a born again believer, and as always, if you're not, I pray that you reach out to me or to another believer. We'd be glad to show you uh, the way to salvation. But if you're watching it and you're joining with us and you are a born again believer, you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit of God. You've been saved. You've been converted. You've been born again. All these things that we've talked about, you've been regenerated as we talked about yesterday. If that was a, I just want you to think about this today. If that was a complete baptism of the Holy Spirit, which we know if God did it, God the Holy Spirit did it, it was complete. 
because he started, he's going to finish it, right? He doesn't do anything halfway. So we know if that baptism was full and complete and completely immersed us in the Holy Spirit. Every single, I mean, if you had to think about it this way, every single square inch of you was baptized by the Holy Spirit and into the Holy Spirit. Then why in the world do we, I'll say we, I won't even say you, but I'll say we collectively, why in the world do we continue to try to do what we want to do instead of what the Spirit calls us to do? And we even talked about that a little bit last night in Bible study. Why is it that if we've been completely baptized into the Holy Spirit, then why in the world do we keep allowing the flesh to win? So today, maybe the challenge here is for you to be reminded of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all that the Spirit has done for you. And then maybe we'll just close with this question. What have you done for the Spirit? God bless you. And I pray you have a great day great day.